I'm Greg Tepper. That's Greg Powers. And this is This Week in Cruton. <laughs> this Week in Recruiting with Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at GPowerScout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at NextLevelD1. See his fine work at TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. And, of course, this segment is brought to you by our good chicken friends at Chicken Express. Which? Chicken Express. I ate there for lunch on my birthday. We had a two-person birthday party. In with Hearn. <laughs> in Hearn, Texas. In which, Hearn. they had chickeny hats. Yes. They were awesome. And I will note, I saw the photos yes. of your, chick, your Chicken Express which, birthday meal. Which, if you've missed meal. it, it's, in, it's the last photo. There's a great photo of Tepper in the last picture of the, blo- the vlog. And mm-hmm. I'll say that I saw, I believe, fried okra. Yeah, that fried was me. Fried pickles. I had fried pickles. Mm-hmm. And a biscuit. I had the biscuit. I went biscuit. It's my birthday. I can do what I want. Yeah, I couldn't like I couldn't completely. <laughs> but, dis- but, be but hold on. There's an important Chicken Express, uh, uh, you know, announcement. Oh yeah, pump me up. I need to give a shout out to our intrepid producer Cred- Ashley Pickle. Credit where credit is due, baby. Because she <laughs> turned me on to the perhaps the most important uh, development in Chicken Express technology mm-hmm. in the past thousand years yep and that is what's it called serendipity salt serendipity salt you take the serendipity salt you mix it in with the gravy oh my gosh Unbelievable. game changer he, i didn't realize like it takes already know. excellent gravy right to the moon well and what i told him too is i like like he got regular tenders i like <laughs> spicy tenders so I, if i do spicy tenders i do regular serendipity salt if i do regular tenders i do the hot serendipity or salt. Chicken express you like it podcast. a little spicy it sounds like pickle i, I can't believe you didn't know about the serendipity i didn't salt. know no. look hey listen we've been plugging the, the serendipity salt I, I guess i haven't been paying attention but like yeah <laughs> it, yeah pickle was like you got to do this and then i did it and she was exactly right i'm gonna exactly ad- right. i'm gonna admit something i'm oh, cutting wow. that clip by the way I'm going to admit something right now. I am team roll. But yes. looking at the photo of your meal from there, Dude, I think good. I should try the – I think I should at least – Run back the biscuit. I think I should at least run back the biscuit mm-hmm. and give it another chance. Yeah. You need to do that with your family pack. I think you can, like, mix half rolls, half biscuits. Okay. Or so eight. that way I'm not going out, like, on a like, ledge yeah. and, like, fully committing – Away from the roll. Or, or I can just order an extra biscuit. Or eight minutes I'm into the podcast. Of, I think I'm just going to order an extra biscuit with the or roll. Or eight minutes into the show and all we've done is talk about Serendipity Express. Serendipity so. <laughs> it's this week in recruiting with Greg Powers, the next little athlete. Let's get to our uh, our topics of the week. We'll start with our prospect on the rise. Our prospect on the rise. I'm going to Colleen Shoemaker uh, to talk about their wide receiver and cornerback, Omari Evans. Uh, he is uh, picking up some big-time offers, including one from the Big Ten this week. Uh, he visited Penn State and received an offer uh, from them after visiting there. We have him rated at the number 99 prospect in the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Hot 100 at texasfootball.com slash recruiting. Uh, you're a guy who likes this guy's speed. And uh, if I'm reading this correctly, four three six in the 40, okay, I, I guess that's fine. That's pretty fast. If you're, if you're into that kind of thing. That's, that's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I think that makes – I mean, he's in the Hot 100 already, right? So, But I think the thing that makes him a prospect on the rise is the fact that he's one of these guys who not only has good speed, but he's very versatile on the football field. He plays wide receiver, defensive back. He's an excellent return man. I think the first two clips on his highlight reel are actually the return clips. He has a case to be the state's most elite return man, mm-hmm. I think. Um could play multiple positions, but everything he does, whether it's football, basketball, runs track, he excels at everything. You know, so he's a great high school athlete. And as he narrows his focus down to one sport when he goes to college, whether that be at, you know, Penn State or Baylor or Rutgers or Vanderbilt or Northwestern, you know, Oklahoma State, wherever he picks, once he concentrates solely on football, you know, he, sky's the limit for this guy. I think that he's really going to be an excellent player. I, I, you know, he last season, he kind of stood out more to me as a wide receiver. Prior to that, I thought that he defensive back was, you know, cornerback was probably going to be the spot that he could really, um, zero in on or circle and, and, and say, that's the position where I'm going to play in college. He reminds me a lot of Florida Gators commit in this same class, Julian Humphrey. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of similarities. Whereas Julian Humphrey, you know, both of them were on the radar as sophomores. Julian kind of concentrated on defensive back, and Omari Evans kind of took off as a wide receiver. But I think either guy could be excellent 
on both sides of the football. Man, and you're you're watching these highlights, and he is just leaving dudes in the dust. <laughs> yep, I think it's fair to say that he's going to rise up. You know, we he was one of the last guys in the, the very first rankings update, but if we've as we've evaluated more, he's he's going to move up most certainly. Let's get to our commit of the week. Our commit of the week. There were a handful we could choose from. We ended up going with one that came down Monday. Right. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, maybe? Monday, yeah, early yeah, this something. week. Time has no. My, yeah, this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> trying to get back into it. Tyler Legacy, running back Jamarian Miller, has committed to Texas. He has he had offers from all over the place. We have a number twenty eight prospect in the DCTF Hot One Hundred. Uh, this is a guy that talking to other recruit nerds out there yep. in um, at at Seven on Seven in College Station. Uh, they were pretty. They were pretty pretty high on Jamarian Miller. That's a name that came up often. Uh, and this is a guy who committing to Texas a big pledge here for Steve Sarkeesian and company. And, and we've talked about him. He's made he's made this notebook before. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a guy who um, he's he's just awesome. You know, Bryson Donnell committed to Texas Tech last week, and we kind of mentioned him as mm-hmm. being part of maybe the state's best one-two combo in the backfield. And what I love about him is his his explosive qualities um and he's also a guy who you can line up in the slot and he catches the ball really naturally so he's multi-dimensional as a running back I think you could define him as an all-purpose back but it's not really fair because he's he's a true running back too mm-hmm. he's a true running back who can do all the things that an all-purpose back can do so that, that's what I think why this is such a huge pickup for Texas. He compliments Jadon Blue tremendously, but they have a lot of the same qualities. It'll be interesting to see that dynamic moving forward. But Texas is a school that's looking to get its running game back on mm-hmm. track. I think if you look at the last few years, I think that's the thing that you can point at. You know, we really expected Keontae Ingram to push the needle forward in Austin as it relates to moving the football on the ground. And, of course, they have Bijan there now. So they have a really good running back, but these guys complement him as well. He's a big, bruising type of guy, and these guys are guys who not only are great running backs out of the backfield, but can catch the football and do different things. Most certainly. Uh, a name to, uh, to keep an eye on, Jamarian Miller, the newest pledge to the Texas Longhorns. Talking this week in recruiting with Greg Powers and Nicola Lapley here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. Let's move on to our underclassman of the week. Our underclassman of the week uh, is 2023 Denton Geyer quarterback Jackson Arnold. Um... This was a guy I think both of us wrote about him on TexasFootball.com. Um, the last time I had seen him, and I think the last time maybe a lot of people have seen, seen him, maybe outside of like Rodney Webb, the coach at Denton Geyer, was in the 2019 6A Division II title game. After Eli Stowers, the A&M now signee, um, goes down with an injury, they put in this freshman, Jackson Arnold. You're in the headlines. To, and, and he, I mean... And this was a guy, I think he was the JV quarterback all year long. Like, he hadn't been practicing the varsity and stuff like that. And then he suddenly gets thrown in against Austin Westlake in a title game. And, you know, look, I thought he was he he did as, the best he could. But if that's the last time you saw Jackson Arnold, guys, the kid done grown up. Because he was maybe, I listed him as one of my three most impressive quarterbacks that I saw out there at State 7-on-7. At State seven seven. I haven't seen a better 2023 quarterback in Texas. You know, I feel good because after the Elite 11, mm-hmm. you called yeah. it. Jackson Arnold made the underclassman of the week for the first time, mm-hmm. right? And I said, I think he's the most technically sound quarterback in the history of Denton guy. And we were like, yeah, uh, that's a okay, lot. what? Yeah, I mean, so, they've I mean, had some great quarterbacks. And I felt after I said it, right? Like after I said it, and like you. You gave me that look from I know, across. I was, like, I was like, dude, J.W. Walsh was there. And he was, <laughs> I, was really in the, I was in the Greg Powers Memorial yeah. Power Zone, and you gave me that look like, are you sure, you kn- are yeah. you sure about this one? Are and you overhyping? So yeah. I doubt it. Like, there was some self-doubt that crept in, and I was like, no, I'm, sta- I'm standing behind it. And I feel a little bit justified now that everyone got a chance to see what he's bringing to the table. And I think that he's probably firmly cemented himself, not only in the discussion, I think that he's the front runner to be the number one quarterback in mm-hmm. in the state recruiting wise, um, the number for the number one spot. There are some good guys in that class, but Jackson Arnold is bringing a little bit of everything to the table. He got some varsity reps last year, and I think that he's a guy who will continue to get better and better. And Rodney Webb has to be really happy with all the weapons they have at Denton Geyer because him and Jace Wilson formed a one-two punch on offense 
that was fun to watch. We were we were like you you you. This was a guy on your list of like I want to go see him, and I was right. like, and and especially when Division One play started out there in College Station, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna follow Powers for the first couple of games, and the darts that this guy was throwing, I mean, it was it was. Shocking, and then like basically, Step was the one who reminded me. He's like, "Hey, this was the kid who came in in that title game in 2019." I was like, "That's the same guy!" <laughs> like, it's 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 unbelievable how much he's developed over the past couple of years. And so, a name to know, Jackson Arnold, uh, came away. I think blew us all away mm-hmm. there in College Station. By the way, he's already got offers from TCU, North Texas, oh. Arkansas, Colorado, Georgia Tech, Michigan State. Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, and Tulsa, and Pickle. I'm going to task us mm-hmm. if we can get the highlights because he played on all of the Texan live fields. Yeah. I guarantee you if we post those highlights, that offer list will we'll double. Yeah. it's it's it, it was really impressive to watch Jackson Arnold, the Titan guy or quarterback. So if you were worried about them losing Eli Stowers, maybe don't. Uh, and then finally, uh, let's talk about our recruiter of the week. Our recruiter of the week, let's talk about El Paso Burgess running back to Forrest Gems. Uh, he's the number 15 prospect in the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Hot 100 at texasfootball.com slash recruiting. He has 20 st- 26 scholarship offers, and he said, I'm going to commit on, what is that, Friday? July the 2nd. July 2nd, which is Friday. It's a couple days from now. He's going to commit. Uh, he only he played in six games as a junior out there in El Paso. Obviously, they had a shortened season because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but this is a guy you think it's coming down to uh, an SEC, two SEC schools and a Big Ten school. And, and before we dive into exactly where I think he's going to go, mm-hmm. just if you're a recruiting fan, mm-hmm. upcoming commitments, mm-hmm. Duncanville offensive tackle Cameron Williams. Big he's one. ready to announce July the 1st. Okay, tomorrow. We have Drail Powers, Duncanville tight end. He's that, ready to announce on July 2nd. Is that your son? It is not. Okay. Just check Calvin out. Harvey, our good friend at uh, Fort Bend Ridge yes. Point, who joined us as yes. one of the recruiting interviews a few weeks ago. Texas also football committing zone. on July 2nd. Yes. <laughs> Tavoris Jones committing on July 2nd. Jordan Hudson committing mm-hmm. on July 4th. So if you're a recruiting fan, the like next the next few days. Yeah, the next few days, like you got to be dialed in. Uh, but Jones, out of all those, I wanted to feature because I feel like he's a guy who kind of gets lost in the shuffle when you're talking about running backs. I feel, and, you know, El Paso knows a thing or two about producing some really good running backs. And he's a guy who I think um, is going to be excellent in college, and you're going to love this, Tepper. I think he's going to Missouri. Oh, really? Oh, no. You I think mean, he's going job, to Missouri? But. I think he's going to Missouri. And, and we'll talk about this a lot. Now that uh, – visits unofficial official visits mm-hmm. all this stuff is back on watch what they do don't listen to what they say and watch from what he's done is he's taken one official visit and it was to mizzou so mm-hmm. he now he's announcing his decision so i think he's going to play in the sec and i think it's going to be for the Tigers. okay well I'll, i will just say that if mizzou beats out an Al- uh, alabama and penn state for uh, a running back that would be quite something uh, as somebody who who knows a little something about Missouri, that you, would be quite that, something. As someone who knows something about Missouri, you're watching this guy's highlight tapes. Is this a guy that you're going to be excited about? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, yes. First of all, he's from El Paso, so I already trust him implicitly. I Secondly, I mean, he's a star. This is a, this is a star. This this would be a, in my opinion, a class maker. This this would be a class maker for Mizzou, in my opinion, and, and a guy who could be part of that Eli Drinkwitz offense and fit in relatively well. I just don't. I don't like. I, it, I mean, it's Alabama. Same <laughs> I wish you reason, had like, this Alabama's pickle. His in facial the top, reactions right now. It's Alabama's amazing. in the top three. I just assume they're going to Alabama. It's Nick Saban. Like, but I'd love to be surprised. I think that would be super cool if he went to if he went to Mizzou. Mizzou has had a uh, great running back from Texas before. Uh, I was crazy about Kendall Lawrence coming out of Rockwall Heath. Uh, that was back eons ago. But right. Um, that would be that would be huge. Missouri's starting to turn up the heat, recruiting the Lone Star State. They're starting to target a little bit, you know, a few more guys, and, and he seemed to have a really good time on that official visit. And you know, in recruiting, you can always be wrong, you know. But that's just where I feel like this one's trending. So we'll see if uh, in a few days the Missouri Tigers don't have a four star from Texas. Wow, that'd be pretty amazing. Uh, he's Greg Powers, an excellent athlete. Follow him on Twitter, G Power Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter, Next Level D1. See his fine work on TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. Stick around. I need you to introduce the next segment. I'll be here.
Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.